Hey, this is Dustin Lynch, and thank God it's Friday at CRS. If you're not going to be able to attend New Faces tonight, please turn in your tickets. We have a lot of people who want to go, mostly relatives of mine. After this session, you do not want to miss the next session, which is a keynote discussion with Carrie Underwood. And tonight, it's all about New Faces. We've got the New Faces cocktail reception featuring Cree Harrison at 515, followed by the New Faces of Country Music Showcase. Special thanks to the show's sponsors, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and the ACMs, and performances are powered by Live Nation. So listen, you've heard us talking about the CRS app. It's important that you have your phone on so that you can, uh, you know, talk to the panelists, you can uh, get that survey at the end and be qualified. The main thing you want to do, even though the phone is on, you want to turn the ringer off. Now, at any moment, that is my phone. That, how, how embarrassing would it be to not be Velma, to not be Fred, Shaggy, even a little scrappy do, and have your phone go off? My God. Hi, everybody. How was lunch? All right. Well, I want to do a quick introduction to this panel. It's called, just in case you don't know where you are right now, this is Friday, Planet Earth. Uh, this is called Defending Your Audience Share. And what we hope this is going to be for all of us is a companion piece to yesterday's CRS study. This project, uh, is designed to take the baton from that and elevate the discussion toward what we think will help country radio defend audience share, extend your brand, and transcend the challenges all of us are facing in a very fast-changing media landscape. So presenting today's data, please welcome the Director of Programming and Brand Manager from the University of Florida Radio Properties, Rob Harder, and the CEO of Futuri Media, Daniel Ann Standig. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Daniel Anstandig. I'm with Futuri Media. This is Rob Harder, University of Florida. Uh, together, we've worked on, a, on an R&D partnership for the last three years to address the future of our industry and to really imagine how our industry is changing and what we can do to create a brighter future for not just radio, but uh, for media in general. Uh, at Futuri Media, I represent a team of 150 people, all with backgrounds in either uh, software engineering or technology or broadcast media and business. And together, we create systems that help radio stations and TV to drive audience uh, and audience share and also to drive revenue growth. And you'll see a little bit about our systems today as we meet. Yes, and uh, we're so glad to be here at CRS. And, uh, and when we you know, said we were going to do this, no one told me we were opening for Carrie Underwood. Uh, so that's going to make things a little interesting. We ask, we know you're very interested in, in radio and audience and, and uh, particularly how to uh, defend, extend, and transcend. But uh, please don't walk out when Carrie comes out. We don't, we don't want, want her to feel, feel bad, bad about it. We, you know, yeah. we know that you know, this is important <laughs> stuff. I am uh, Rob Harder. I'm with the University of Florida. Uh, but I will have you know that I'm also uh, very much a radio person. I've been in radio my entire adult life. Uh, I literally was spinning records at a radio station when I started. I won't tell you what year. Uh, but uh, I've been all, done all the shifts, mornings, afternoons, overnights, when there was such a thing uh, in a lot of markets, as well as programming and VP of programming. And so as a current country radio programmer, I, I'm the program director of Country 1037, the Gator in the Gainesville Ocala market, of course, at the University of Florida. This data means uh, a lot to me, and we hope it will matter uh, to our programmers in the audience today. So thank you for being here today. So we want to answer three questions today. You know, I've been in the seat where you are, and I want tangible answers. What can I take back from CRS and, and start using immediately? Well, we've thought about that, so we're going to answer three questions. Number one, how can we defend our country audience and our revenue share? Very important, obviously. Secondly. How should we extend our country content onto new platforms? And then third, how will we transcend or rise above our challenges as the country competition landscape changes? 
And we recognize that everybody today has more competitors, not just from a programming or audience perspective, but that your advertisers have more options than ever. So we're going to address not just programming opportunities today, but also some of the challenges that we're seeing from a sales or advertising perspective. You know, at the University of Florida, we have a great relationship with the, the fine folks from Futuri Media. Uh, we have a great uh, research and development relationship. We've done uh, several research projects, as a matter of fact. And in this instance, our lead researcher, Dr. Sylvia Chan Olmsted, and her amazing team uh, put this research together along with Futuri Media. In fact, we have one of our researchers in the audience. Would everyone say hello to Sam Houle, rhymes with cool. So thank you, Sam. You guys did a fantastic job, and this data is really compelling. So let's talk about methodology, and so we have a little understanding of what we're looking at. So uh, in order to get in the survey, uh, respondents were asked what their favorite music format was, and if they said country, they're in. So we have 1,392 participants from Qualtrics, and because we have so much data, uh, we can break it down by AM, FM, country listening, as well as digital only country listening, which is really fascinating. And uh, the survey is extremely fresh, uh, conducted January 2nd through the 17th. I don't lie when I say I have Doritos in my pantry that are older than the research. <laughs> I need to eat the Doritos. So we asked a myriad of demographic questions. You'll see that the, the demographic uh, basically mirrors the Nielsen country demographic profile. So we asked about income, we asked about geography, marital status, children, education, and more. Uh, a lot of which is not, not included in this particular presentation because it's so much data, but will be included in subsequent presentations. So let's start with our first big question, and that is how do we defend your country audience and revenue share? Now, we addressed this question from about every angle we could imagine in this research study, talking to 1,300 participants. Uh, we had a very broad questionnaire, and we really were trying to find where a broadcast listener is different from a streaming listener of country. Well, first, let's start with some good news, laying a little good foundation here. There's good momentum in the country music format. When we asked people if they listened the same, more or less, over the last three months to country radio, First of all, more people said that they listen more than less, and we see that as a great sign. That is. And even better news, 23% plan to listen to more country streaming in the next three months. So we see positive momentum for the format overall. Okay, that's good, so where's the problem? Well, not necessarily a problem, but an interesting opportunity that came from the data. I think these next three slides are really important. Pay attention to these programmers uh, and personalities because this tells a very specific story. So when we look at the average week for a listener to country, we see that they spend across any demo eight hours listening in broadcast and they spend five hours listening to streaming. That's broad when we look across every demo. But now, so that's a total of 13 hours of listening. Now look at what happens when we go to 18 to 49 year olds. There's a little less broadcast listening. There's a little more streaming listening. The overall time spent went from 13 hours to 12 hours in an average week. By the way, 12 hours is still really strong. Uh, and if you were to look across Nielsen uh, data, you would see that 12 hours of listening in an average week, of course, is a terrific benchmark. Right, so this is still great news for radio. It's just interesting the way that they're choosing AM, FM listening uh, a little less and digital listening a little more. Still, these are radio listeners. And now let's go a little younger to women 18 to 34, who we know are really important for any top performing country station. And here you can see that now broadcast listening went down another hour. So we started at eight, now we're at five, and country streaming went up an hour. So now again, we still have 12 hours of total listening, but the younger we go and the more we focus on women 18 to 34, the more we see this shift happening from broadcast listening to streaming listening. You know, and this is something we probably could have uh, confirmed in the abstract if you ask someone, do younger listeners listen more digitally than they might listen to radio? But when you see it reflected in the data, it becomes extremely real and something we should be actionable on. So now let's talk about our first defend question. As a programmer, the things that uh, you think about all the time, even when you're on vacation, unfortunately, <laughs> how do I maintain my brand's audience on the air and online, and the data gave us a pretty clear path. What do you do? Well, the recommendation is to target country fans, particularly young females, 
with a social strategy that provides sticky and recyclable content. So what does that mean? That does not mean, let's talk about what we don't mean. We're not saying target your radio station to 1834 females. That's a completely different conversation. What we're talking about is how important social media is to defending your brand and how important 18 to 34 females are to social media. It's essential. So by targeting women 18 to 34 with your social strategy, overall, this research shows, and you'll see as we go through today's presentation, that you'll see that when you perform well with women 18 to 34 on social, the brand performs better overall in broadcast and social. So digging a little bit deeper here, if you are serious about reaching young female country listeners, you certainly have to be on more than Facebook and YouTube. Women 18 to 49, we looked at which platforms they use nearly every day, and Facebook and YouTube were certainly by far the leaders here. They're on Facebook nearly every day, they're on YouTube nearly every day. No huge surprise there. But now let's look even younger, women 18 to 34, and we can see that Yes, we still see Facebook and YouTube in this mix. We see a higher level of women 18 to 34 using platforms like Instagram and Pinterest and Snapchat every day. But then there's a totally new player that emerges when you look at 18 to 34 year olds only rather than 18 to 49, and that is TikTok. TikTok is growing so fast. And of course, there they are. And I promise you, if we look at this a year from now, it will, it will be even higher, that, that's my guess. So this tells us that TikTok is gonna be an important part of developing a social strategy. And that kind of leads us to this question is, uh, you know, at this point, okay, if social is so important, what do we put on our social channels? And to answer that question, we started here. We know that we can't just take our broadcast music content, throw that on social channels and expect that uh, that's going to be a complete social strategy. So we need to look at what else is happening in the country format that can be a part of our social content strategy. Yeah, for programmers, this is what you do all the time, right? Non-music elements, what makes, us, uh, what makes us different? And so we asked participants, what motivates you to listen? And they were pretty clear in their answers. Number one, artist access. Artist access is mo more important. Personalities and morning shows, second. And local content, third all wonderful attributes and something to focus on if you're a programmer. But I think too what's interesting is to look at what was secondary. And these things that we're about to look at are not unimportant, they're not demotivators, and they are parts of an important radio brand and probably part of your sales strategy too. So it's not like they're not important, but to give you an idea of, of what they're a little less interested in, contests and prizes, promotions, station interaction, and concerts. Now, I have put together radio stations before and focused a lot on, on all of those. Uh, and it's not like you shouldn't and make them part of the recipe, but this gives you a roadmap of what, you know, with limited time and resources, like many of us in radio have these days, where should the focus be? Well, our research shows that it should be on artist access, uh, the morning shows and personalities as well. And that's a good place to start if you're thinking about content that should go onto your social channels to appeal to women 18 to 34 and drive the overall performance of your country brand. So what about younger female country streaming listeners? We've been talking about what appeals to broadcast and streaming listeners overall, but now what appeals to 18 to 34 year old women who listen almost exclusively to streaming? We have two new players that show up here in the rank of importance. Yeah, smart speakers. So now we get a reaction that platform matters. So smart speakers showed up for 18, 34 year old women and women 25, 34 had an interesting reaction, choosing the music. They want input into what actually plays uh, in order to motivate them to listen. Very important. So we've talked about using social to defend your current audience share which kind of leads us naturally into how do we extend onto new platforms and what should we be doing on social and why should we be there in the first place? Well, let's, let's start with why. An interesting thing that we found here in this study is that you in broadcast have a total advantage over streaming services when it comes to your audience's social activity. Broadcast listeners are actually more likely to share, comment, uh, like or ultimately to tag a content on a social uh, feed. What you're looking at on the screen with women 18 to 34 in the light blue 
is broadcast listeners and how much they use social services in these ways, and the dark blue is streaming only country listeners. Now, I think uh, as a programmer, I will tell you that I was uh, surprised by this, and pleasantly so, right? So I would have said that the radio listeners versus the digital only listeners, well, the digital only listeners are probably way more engaged in social, but it's the opposite. The radio listeners are much more engaged in social, and so that's great news for radio programmers as you migrate uh, your brands onto social media. Your audience is already there and waiting for you. So we know we have to be on social. We have an idea a, a bit here of the type of content that we might use. Um, but even more, where are there other opportunities for us from a social perspective? Well, when we focus in on women 18 to 34, again, we see that younger women are engaged influencers and they are driving the social conversation. So if you're creating content that's easy to share or polls that are easy for people to quickly kind of answer a survey or share with a friend, this type of interaction uh, will not only help to uh, engage your current audience, but they will share that content with their friends, which uh, of course helps to extend your brand into new places. Social engagement overall with women 18 to 34 is just a major opportunity. And we look at, when we think about radio, we think of a, the industry of influencers. Right. And so all of the talk in the marketing space about how influencers are becoming a critical part of marketing plans, well, we are an industry of influencers. We have personalities who are influencers. We know how to do this. <laughs> we know how to do this. This is a great opportunity for country radio in particular. Some of what we found is that four out of five women 18 to 34 say social media is the most effective way for brands to reach them. Uh, not only that, nearly half said that Instagram is the best way that they like to connect with brands. 80% try products based on social media recommendations. So this is part of their lifestyle. 26% likely to share a product or a service, a recommendation via social media. And women 18, 34, most likely to follow a brand on social media compared to male demographics. They're just better than guys anyway. So um, they are definitely on social media using it, and that's where we feel like our brand should be. This I thought was really amazing too. Look at this loyalty and discovery uh, statistic here. So 90% of millennial women follow brands on social media, 90%. And 50% discover new brands or products on social media. You know, as an aside, we also at the University of Florida have a student station uh, that's at 95.3 FM called GHQ, and we've worked with Futuri on research projects uh, with GHQ as well. And I, I was struck as a programmer when we first started the station a couple, about two and a half years ago, everybody who came in, all the students who came in, they wanted to be on the air. They wanted to be like DJs. And I felt so proud, <laughs> uh, and, and I still do, but now probably just under half want to exclusively brand on social media. So they want to do social media for GHQ. Don't really care as much about being on the air. So it's, it, that just sent the message home to me, like in a personal way, of what, how much of the lifestyle this is becoming. It tells you a little bit about where they feel the influence uh, right. is. Right, and they're having as much fun. A lot of us radio people have the same story about, oh, I worked through three straight holidays because I love radio so much. They feel the same way about social media. It's fascinating. Right, although they probably schedule that content on holidays. I promise but, yeah. you. So the main reasons that women 18 to 34 follow brands on social, we, we dug into that a bit too, and we saw that certainly coupons and discounts and so on are good incentives. But even more than that, just general interest in learning about a product or participating in uh, content about a product is a main reason that a woman 18 to 34 years old would engage with a brand on social. Right, so now uh, another extend question. So how can you use video to drive more ratings and revenue? We've, see, we've seen how important video is to your audience. Look at this. 18 to 34 year olds, 90% are on YouTube. And one out of four country listeners have used YouTube more in the last 90 days. YouTube is incredibly important. As we found not only with, with this uh, study, but there was an earlier study uh, regarding podcasting that, uh, that Futuri found uh, where 70% are using uh, YouTube for podcasting. L last year with the University of Florida, we actually did a study where we asked 
people who listen to podcasts, where they go to learn about new content, and 70% said YouTube, which led us immediately to start understanding how video could be a greater opportunity, uh, not just for radio, but for country in particular through this study. Right. So YouTube, everybody is on YouTube, and not only that, they're using YouTube for product recommendations. Uh, we see here that, uh, again, whether you look at a streaming audience or a broadcast audience, virtually one out of four here have used YouTube more in the last 90 days. So the same way we see momentum in country radio, there's even more momentum in terms of use with YouTube. So YouTube, it's important. We need to create video. Well, that's not exactly something that we have done as an industry uh, in the many years right. that we've built, built this country off. And if you're asking as a radio programmer or a personality, would, are people really interested in video content from a radio station? Are they? A little bit. The answer is definitely yes. <laughs> so definitely. Th three out of four of our respondents in this study said that they do prefer to see more video from their favorite country brand. But that leads to the question, what type of video? Are we talking about video from the studio? Are we talking about music videos? Are we talking about lifestyle videos, et cetera? The answer really in, in this study was all of the above. Now, one thing that we got really clear from this research is that country is definitely more than the music to this audience. It's certainly about a community. It's about a lifestyle. It's faith, family flag, as, as we say, uh, in the country format. And we saw that over and over again in this study, too. But the question for us as operators is, OK, well, how, how can we possibly create this content uh, on a, in an easy way? Think about it. If, you, if someone and it says to me, OK, I need you to create some really compelling video content, I'm, the first thing I'm going to think is what, then how, where am I going to find the time, those kind of things. Uh, so it's important uh, to find ways to be able to do this in a quality way, but save time as well. Now, one thing you could do is certainly see Rob afterwards and uh, get his card and hire somebody from the University of Florida who is a student today yes, who's sir, very sir. interested in social. Sam. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> Sam is here in the front row, yeah. and yes, yep. he's available at the end of the semester. Right. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so Sam Hool, we'll see where he goes. It's a fair <laughs> game after this session. Uh, but even more than that, there are systems that you can use. So at Futuri, we actually developed a system called Topic Pulse Instant Video. Our Topic Pulse system uh, watches what's trending in real time on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and shows you what's trending in your target audience in your local market right now. And it will predict what's going to trend in the next four to six hours. So in terms of station content, we actually, uh, if, if our video friends wouldn't mind uh, activating the video here, Well, the, the there goes. I see a mouse. Bleak. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we actually help uh, stations to create turnkey social video that is all about what's trending right now, uh, and you can quickly hit one button and rebrand that video for your station. Uh, and ultimately, uh, you know, th that helps you to create more content fast for your social channels. But then there's also creating video based on your own station audio. And as we mentioned, of course, because of YouTube being so important to discovery and 70% of podcast users going to YouTube to find content, the ability to actually create content from your social audio. Oh, there we go. Uh, All right. Th there we go. There's Topic Pulse Instant Video. So this is an example of uh, cr uh, quick videos that are uh, created by our system that you can instantly hit rebrand and turn it into your own station branded content. They're one minute quick social videos that are about something trending right now. And I believe the next video is a quick example. Hopefully have some cats in there. You know how cats do. Yes. Very cats well on video. Always highly rated on YouTube. They're known for it. Okay, so, uh, so with, our, with our post system, you can also take broadcast content, slice it quickly, and instantly turn it into video. I'll tell you, we've done that a lot with our uh, sports talk station. So we'll take segments, interviews with Coach Spurrier, or interviews with Coach White, or, uh, you know, we, we talk to a lot of people, not just at the University of Florida on our sports station, uh, w which is the home of the Gators. Um, but uh, we, and we'll do those audiograms, and they're, they're very effective. So on to how we reach country fans for music discovery. Um, beyond social videos that are about what's trending right now, social videos about new artists or new music 
is an uh, absolute opportunity for country music listeners. And you'll see this in a couple ways in this study. This is one of them in that uh, country listeners went to YouTube first in this study, women 18 to 34, country listeners went to YouTube first when they thought of new music. So as a programmer, I'm thinking to myself, you know, radio's always been the king of new music discovery, but listeners are on YouTube a lot and they're discovering new music. So it's also important for my brand to be there so they can discover my brand as well. So now we get to another extend question. Can a mobile application extend my country brand? You can probably guess what the answer to this one is, but it is a resounding yes. Absolutely it can, particularly if it's socially connected. Think about a mobile app. It is your home on the mobile phone, which, is, which everyone in this room has their mobile phone on them. If they don't, they're scrambling to find it uh, because this is the way we are now. And so it is your home, social connections uh, all together. And if you'll see, we have, uh, as a matter of fact, the uh, Futuri apps at 1037, the Gator, and many of our stations. And these are examples, uh, 93Q in Houston, some of the screenshots. And uh, I really love how socially connected they are and the variety that you get in the screenshots. And we're very proud of them. I use them all the time. I think I use mine literally almost every day for contesting on 1037, the Gator. And it is uh, fantastic because I'm contesting now where my, where my audience is instead of trying to get them to be the ninth caller on, on the telephone. So we know mobile usage is high in general, of course, but what can we learn from the AM, FM country radio listeners and the way they use mobile? Well, 44% of our listeners have the uh, radio station mobile app on their phone. When you go younger, though, when you're 1834, you see that 48% have the mobile app on their phone. This is great news for radio and where we're going. And this is something else that is extremely important. 26% have the uh, co connected car connection. Uh, how many of you guys uh, are using connected car uh, when you get in? You know, the Apple CarPlay. CarPlay. Uh, uh, I know more and more people who are using it. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. And so we want to be there as well. And that's where they're going to be anyway. So when we saw that, when we asked these survey respondents, how many of you, if you're a country music, country radio fan, how many of you have your favorite country stations app on your phone? And we saw that 44% said that they do. Then that led us to the question, okay, well, is that, is that a good number? Is that a bad number? 44%, is that high or low? Well, a, a little context for you. 44%, yes, said that they had their favorite country station on their phone. Right. If you look back at the last... Uh, at, uh, over the last month, the last 30 days, 30% of the 12 plus US population listened to Pandora, 24% of the US population listened to Spotify, and so on and so forth. Now, we know that it's unlikely that if we, we, we did not ask a question in this study, have you listened to that app in the last 30 days? We asked if you had the app. But this tells us, we think, that there's a huge opportunity, a sleeping opportunity for country stations that do have your own station mobile app on your uh, listener's phone to now start using push notifications and promotion and feature specific promotion on the air to drive people to use that mobile app because they do have it. And when we look at the number of people who have downloaded station specific apps versus users of Pandora or Spotify or Apple Music, this tells us that we have a, a footprint, a digital footprint as an industry, a country radio industry that is probably today underutilized. I think so too. You know, it's, it's one thing to get them to download the app. And you hear a lot of stations, we've done it, where you say download our app because that's where it starts. But then you have to engage on the app. And that, a lot of that has to do with social media. And we talk about extending that brand. Now let's talk about transcending. <laughs> Transcending. It sounds so, <laughs> so cool. When, yes, we, uh, when, we, when we put it on the slide, we were really proud of ourselves for the nickel <laughs> word. But what we really mean is that there are more challenges today. And how do we rise above the challenges that we face in country radio? How do we get ahead of competitors? Let's stop playing defense all the time. Let's stop only having the conversation about social. How do we get beyond that? And that led us to a number of different paths. So how do we get ahead instead of reacting as an industry and here comes TikTok and we wait three years and then we create a TikTok strategy. How do we get ahead and stay ahead of what's happening technologically around us? I'll tell you one of the hottest things in media is, is podcasting. 
uh, the audio, uh, I call it, you know, the audio arts are growing by leaps and bounds, which I think is great for radio. But is it is important to radio? I mean, did this study find that it was important? Well, of course it did. The reach, frequency, and preferences of the country podcast audience is something that we absolutely should be paying attention to. So it's an on-demand podcasting and audiogram strategy that you need to be effective. Now, one thing I will say, we didn't really make a definition of podcasting. Is it a replay of your morning show? Is it a replay of an interview, maybe with Carrie Underwood? Is it a, something that you did just exclusively for, we didn't ask, we didn't ask. And so it's, they self-identify, or they self-classify uh, self in that instance. Telling us what a podcast is to them. Right. So 36% of all country fans have listened to podcasts in the last month. One out of three at this point. If you don't have a podcast strategy, that train is quickly leaving the station. If you were to dig into 18 to 49-year-old country fans, half of them have listened to podcasts in the last month. Now, from our prior work together in research and development between Futuri and the University of Florida, again, we found that podcasting can mean anything from an on-demand video on YouTube to an actual Apple podcast. But this tells you that the world is moving into more and more an on-demand mindset. And what I love is how engaged the audience is in the podcasting. I mean, this is something that you are going to love if you're a programmer. We talk about reach and frequency. So let's dig into that a little bit. What does the data tell us? So country fans, 20% uh, uh, who listen to a podcast in the past month, one in five, listen multiple times a week, 15% listen every day. But when you get younger, 18 to 49 country fans, 28% listen multiple times a week, and over 20% listen every day. What an opportunity that presents for radio to transcend. Now, again, the, here we go again with what, Rob, you want us to podcast, what are we supposed to podcast about? Well, that's great news. This is like one of those big sighs of relief for me as a programmer and a country fan, because the majority of podcast listeners, they want to hear you talk about music. That was the genre that actually was number one by far. They want to hear you talk about new music. They want to introduce, they want you to be uh, the introduction for them uh, and artist access to learn about new artists. They want to hear your local personality talk about what's happening in your market. Uh, they want to hear first about what's happening in the country lifestyle, and then about when we get into things like news and politics and so on, it goes way, way down from right. there. That's literally first place and second place, and it's not even close. So, and this is something for radio personalities, uh, for country radio personalities and programmers. This is the world we live in. I mean, we do, we call it content or we call it show prep. Uh, but this is a chance to exercise those muscles, so those long-form shows you've wanted to do, the long interviews, or maybe you wanted to ha you have a take on a certain aspect of country music. Your audience wants to hear that. They absolutely will, will reward you for it. Majority of podcast listeners today are discovering new podcasts from social. So if you are going to start a podcast, promoting it on social is absolutely the way to go. You can see in virtually every demo here, uh, people are finding social, they go to social first to learn about new podcasts and new on-demand content. That's what we're seeing over and over again is that they're using social to make brand decisions and to find out about programming. And that's why it's so important for us in radio to be good at social. So if at this point you haven't taken away that women 18 to 34 are really important to the overall health of the format, which many of us see in, in many different studies, but also that social is the way to engage them and keep them with our brands, and that video and podcasting and mobile is a big opportunity for us from a broadcast reach perspective, uh, then uh, you know that, that is the big, for us, that was the big takeaway from this study. Right. Even more, we started looking at audience and revenue share. Now, at Futuri, we actually have a service called Topline, and Topline provides insights and sales research for broadcast radio and broadcast sales teams that need a little extra data-driven story to help them sell 
uh, advertising or sell to the right buyer. With Topline, uh, a media sales executive or radio sales exec can go into our system, enter a marketing objective for a particular buyer, and then within 24 hours, they get a nicely designed presentation that shows why your brand is the best one for that buyer to buy. So we went to our top line team and we said, okay, what is special? Here's all the data that we just collected with the University of Florida. Also, let's look at all of the other research that we have at top line and tell us from a, an, a marketer's perspective, an advertiser's perspective, what is special about country radio that this group, that our industry really has to know. Right, and this is stuff that your sales department, your sales manager will be very excited about because it's a great story. Country 18 to 49 year old listeners care more about connecting with brands based on recommendations from influencers. So your personality is doing endorsements not only on the air but on your social channels uh, and also using products as part of their on-demand video or as part of podcasts is a huge opportunity for uh, country radio in general. Right, there's a trust factor there and they absolutely trust their radio personalities. And you can see in the statistics there that it bears out. They're more likely to engage with brands through social. They're more likely to actually consider a product or make a purchase based on a recommendation that they saw on social. And they're more influenced by a recommendation from a family member, which uh, of course speaks clearly to the country audience. Well, I was just talking about the format a little bit just in general, and I, I really believe that, that, that country listeners think of artists and if you, you know, personalities as an extension of the family if we're, if we're doing it right. Now, not only that, but when we think about women 18 to 34, and we really zero into women 25 to 34 who listen to country, they're making major life decisions more often than the national average. So this is looking specifically at country listeners, women 25 to 34 versus women 25 to 34 who listen to virtually to any other format. And you can see that they're more likely to be buying a house or getting engaged or going back to school uh, or even changing jobs. So from a marketing uh, perspective, there's a uniqueness to country radio and to country brands for influencers in particular that we can maximize as an industry. One of the great things about the research is that we have a lot of data on the country listener. So this is really uh, compelling. Radio leads to search, which leads to shopping, which leads to buying. 56% of the AMFM country radio listeners have searched online after hearing a sponsored message over the air. So they're using these products in tandem. They are hyper aware of these brands that show up on digital and on radio, and they know how to get to both. And I think that, you know, obviously when you have an endorsement from an influencer, uh, that makes it all the more powerful. So lots of information here that points us to ways that we can defend, uh, extend, and transcend. So just to, to kind of recap some of the things that we've learned here, and then we'll share some uh, a link where you can find some key findings and additional research. This study was so large, uh, it was actually, uh, I think this was one of the largest studies that uh, U University of Florida has done. I believe so. Dr. Sylvia Chan Olmsted was very uh, demonstrative in her, uh, when she exclaimed to me, this is a huge study. <laughs> and the biggest one perhaps that she's ever done. There were so many key findings. We wanted to share the biggest highlights with you today, but we also have prepared additional findings and a, an easy download that you can get from our site uh, to learn more about what we found in this study and share it with your friends back at your station and back at home. Right, so we told you we'd leave you with a checklist, you know, something that you can take with you. And uh, so targeting country fans, especially uh, females 18 to 34 with a strong social media strategy, that is something that should definitely be on your checklist. We saw that local is still valuable for women 18 to 34 here. When we looked at what motivates them to listen, they were interested in content that was local. They were interested in content that came from local personalities. They were interested in music. They were interested in lifestyle content. So again, the, everything that you do between the songs is an absolute opportunity to bring to new platforms like your social channels or podcasts. So now we go to extend, part of the checklist. So beyond reach, younger women are engaged and influencing. They are driving the social conversation. That's very important to remember that like we talked about before, no matter where your radio station is targeted, your social media strategy should really be targeting women 1834 who listen to country because they are gonna evangelize for your brand if you do it right.
and think about that when you consider who's actually running your social strategy. Right. Uh, <laughs> if it's me, you got a problem, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say that. <laughs> uh, AM, FM country listeners want more video from your station. The appetite is there. The question is, how do you do it in a way that is resource friendly and that it makes it easy to produce on a day-to-day -day basis and right. is efficient for your team? Uh, and there are tools like, like ours at Futuri that you can use. You can also think about how you can create quick social videos using your personalities each day. Right, and one of the good things is, and I've, I've, I've benefited from this, hire personalities who already get this as part of their DNA, where you don't have to like necessarily as a programmer, if it's not necessarily your strong suit, find someone who's it is, because that makes life a lot easier and they're probably a little better at it too. Consider your mobile strategy, and when you think about mobile, A, go beyond the aggregators. So yes, it's great to be on every aggregator streaming platform, but there is a definite opportunity for your brand to have your own app on your listener's phone. There are advantages to having your own station app that are not afforded to you if you're only on aggregators. Right, and remember, the aggregator is there to promote the aggregator. And you're, if you have a, your own standalone mobile app, you can connect it to social, you can contest on it, and you can do things with it. Uh, it gives you more control, more engagement. You can have your audience voting for, for songs, you can use push notifications to drive tune-ins at specific times, and you get more data from your audience. I can tell you that Homesick by Kane Brown is my audience's favorite song over the last 30 days. I know that because that's one of the features on my app. Now, rising above the challenges that we face on a daily basis, getting into on-demand and podcasting, uh, we called this an audiogram. An audiogram in our uh, terminology is taking something that you had on the air, so a morning show bit that you did, a second date update, and then using a, a system like Post to quickly take that bit uh, and turn it into a video that you can post on social And media. I think, too, this might be a really passion play for some of your air personalities who've had this this thing that they want to get out there, or this, this show that's completely separate from what they do on the radio, and now they have an opportunity. And the strategies and brand extensions that we talked about today are a definite opportunity from a, uh, from a sales perspective. We've seen that the country audience responds to influencers and that there's a multi-platform sales opportunity here. So as we promised, on our site, we have at futurimedia.com slash crs2020, uh, futurimedia.com slash crs2020. If you go to the site, we have, uh, we have the additional findings from this presentation and a summary of some of the key findings that you saw today. So you can bring this back to your station and share uh, with your team after CRS. And I hope this data is going to be extremely helpful to you. I think it's really important. You know, I mentioned joking a little bit earlier, although really I did spend records, uh, how much uh, radio has changed just since I've been in it. And it hasn't been that long. But the fact is, we have to change with it. We have to recognize that, you know, when I first got into radio, radio was radio, newspaper was newspaper, TV was TV, everyone had their, their place. Now, any one of these brands can do podcasts, can do videos, and do it well, and extend their brand, and it's on us in radio to use this information and, uh, to the best of our ability with our resources, uh, serve our audience like we always have. So we do have a few minutes left for questions here. If anybody has questions, I believe there's a couple microphones in the audience. One of the things that we hope that you take away from today as we think about new social content uh, is that there's from just from the content that you're creating today, you already have huge opportunities to take what you're already doing and move it to new platforms. If you're walking out of this room thinking, man, I have a lot more that I have to do and I don't have the team to do it, we actually think that you actually you do have all that you need today. <laughs> it's just about getting the right tools and systems to help your team take your content today from broadcast and move it into social channels. Right. Yes, sir. Daniel, John Zimmer, good hey, to John. see you here. Uh, with your work and studies uh, with the University of Florida, I'm really interested as far as what the new org chart looks like. We see the research, we see the insights, we're to transcend, but the transformation of doing what you do day to day to, and then to uh, incorporate the new tools, that impacts a lot of people, the time, and you know, like we said, there's less time in the day. 
you have a lot of great tools and systems to help with that. But the organizational chart, you know, what's the new model going to look like or what should it look like? Well, we, we've examined this quite a bit. Thank you for the question. We've examined this quite a bit with the University of Florida through our GHQ project. GHQ stands for Gator Headquarters. Right. Uh, and everything is Gator, you know. At, uh, right. Oh, and we also did research and showed the Gators were going to win the football national title this year, but we didn't want to. We didn't want to spoil we didn't that. Put that out. So yeah, we just, just yeah, put that out. in the back, uh, yeah, back the room. Back but, but we actually have, have worked with the University of Florida to create a millennial or Gen Z, sorry, focused right. radio station and brand where we've experimented with entirely different models of how people work together and uh, what, what each role really looks like. I think it's, uh, you know, I think too, it's a matter of being really hyper aware, uh, creating maybe a hierarchy of the most important things first. You can't do everything at once, especially if you have uh, limited staff, like we all do. I mean, none of us are like replete with tons of people like we used to be in this business. Um, but so, so maybe a hierarchy, if it was me, uh, I think a mobile app th that is socially connected would be extremely helpful because it does so many things and you can focus so much energy on it. But I, but I think you have to constantly be monitoring and seeing where you're making headway. And what are, you know, we say in radio, what do you want to be famous for, right? That's all, that's what we talk about in branding. So what are you getting really good at? You might, you might bring somebody aboard or you may have someone who's just like a really amazing person at social media and they're helping to, to extend your brand in a certain way on social media. I, I don't think it's necessarily that, that every, this is not cookie cutter, it's not every situation is gonna fit every station, but I don't think, I think the worst thing we can do as an industry is go, Nah, it's not there yet. Now nah, we shouldn't do that. We're just going to play 60 minutes right. of commercial-free country. So what, what we've seen at GHQ is that anybody on the air also has content creation responsibilities on social and digital. Uh, in general, anybody who uh, is working at GHQ, if they're in a content creator seat, uh, they have to be to, um, they have to be uh, omni-channel. They have to be able to work on every possible channel. From a programming perspective, we look at first at social for research, and we look at real-time information that's coming in from digital platforms for research at GHQ. Uh, there's very little gut-level instinct, you know, that goes into <laughs> programming uh, at that station because actually the students are extremely data-focused. They want to see. There's so much information they want to use it all and then make judgments based on it's that. It's really interesting. You know, we've had several students. We have some brilliant students, and they've gone on to get jobs in the industry. And in every case, they've had to do something different, right? They've had to learn to do something different, and maybe it relates to what they did at GHQ. We've had people go over and do radio, but they also have to be really good at video, and they better be really good at social media, and they better be really good at social media and video, uh, those kind of things. Uh, I tell our students, I'm like, your brand is when you leave this university is that you're smart, and, and you know social media like the back of your hand, and don't you let anybody else believe anything otherwise, because this industry is kind of depending on, on people like that to take us to the next level. And from a, from a sales perspective, we've seen that there is definitely an upside in having a focus in terms of digital uh, management, digital sales management, and uh, digital selling versus uh, broadcast only selling or broadcast and digital blended. Broadcast and digital blended does uh, help to generate some activity, but ultimately by having a separate team that helps to focus and bring uh, value specifically to your digital platforms, we've been seeing that more and more. I'm really excited the about the future of radio for this uh, very reason. I mean, I think that we in radio possess a lot of, we may not know it, but we possess a lot of these innate skills and, and intuitive uh, moves to really shine on social media if we just if we just let ourselves go there uh, and in digital if we just let ourselves go there uh, I think that in terms of if I'm if you're separating industries you know TV versus uh, radio anymore I mean uh, audio is is everywhere and it's growing and this is what we do and so I think this is great news and op and to me all I think is that all this represents opportunity we just need to stay on top of it we need to keep researching and we need to know what's going on and we need to respond the way we've always done. You know, in radio, all we've ever wanted to do is make people happy because we know that, you know, that's good for us. But uh, if, we, if we continue to do that, I think we'll be fine.
So in summary, we believe this is the best time to be in this industry. There's more opportunity than ever. The research shows us that we have an audience that's leaning into the country format. They want what you are bringing to your stations and to your brands. They actually want a lot more of it, and they want it now in video, and they want it in on demand. They want they, it all. They want to be able to share it, and they want to be able to interact with you. And that's possibly the very best outcome that we could find in this research. There was there's certainly a lot of passion with the country audience. Absolutely. And uh, so I think this is nothing but good news, and we're glad to share it with you today. Thank you very much. Thank you.